Welcome to the 2023 office tour slash what's in my bag. Now, we're in my garage. Why are we in the garage, you may ask? Well, I have turned my third car garage into my office. This is the new office. Oh, good timing. Hold that thought. The wife is pulling in. That's one of the cons of being in your garage. I mean, what did I tell you when I'm filming? You don't come in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, so we are in this new office. I've been here for about two months. Moved in from upstairs. I thought that was going to be a good office for me that I moved into last year. The ceilings just ended up being too weirdly shaped. I needed more space and the ceilings made it hard to build sets. So the kids, I could hear them out in the hall. Anyone who works from home knows that's a challenge. So we have a boat garage, 45 feet long, I think, and about 17 feet wide. We're never gonna get a boat, not a boat guy. Instead of going and renting an office to get a bigger space, I had this place carpeted. And then Carter and I, we used all of the acoustic paneling from our South Jordan office that we used a couple years back that we no longer use because we moved down to St. George. Put all the acoustic paneling throughout this whole area because normally garages are really echoey and you can't really hear echo right now because we've treated it acoustically with about eight, $9,000 worth of acoustic treatment. And then I had someone carpet this whole thing. I thought beforehand and made sure that we had when we built this house, we had them install heating and cooling in here so it has its own thermostat as well. So we built it out fairly cheap. Instead of me having to lease a place, we are now in my garage and it's a lot quieter because it's separated from the house. And this right here that you see is a portable wall that my brother Dakota and I built from scratch. We just went to Home Depot, got some two by fours, built a frame, then just designed the walls as we want on either side. And we'll show you that in a minute. And that just allows me to have a set over here and another set on this side and it moves which I'm not going to demonstrate that because it is very heavy. This is my, like I said, this is the sixth office I've had since we launched Full-Time Filmmaker seven years ago. I started in a basement apartment. That's where I launched Full-Time Filmmaker. And then we moved into our own house. And then I was in a den that was maybe 10 by 15 feet. And I got really cramped really quick. So I moved to my basement, had more space there. And then eventually we bought a building in South Jordan, which we don't longer live there. But but we had an awesome office space there. And then I moved down here to St. George, Southern Utah. And that's when I went into my loft, which is what was last year's office tour. And that only lasted a year. And now we are in my boat garage. So anyway, I'm gonna walk you through my office tour. Um, I've bought quite a few more things since last year. We're not gonna talk about everything in this video. If you wanna see an extended version, you can check out fulltimefilmmaker.com. This is just gonna be a condensed version for YouTube. First of all, this is the front of the garage where I used to park my car. Now we just park both of our cars in that garage. And so we don't use it as a garage. However, it is really nice. For example, you see this couch right here. When I ordered that, I just opened this garage up and FedEx or whoever pulls right into the driveway, they roll it off, I roll it in and I close the garage and it's in the office. So. That's a really cool part of having an office in your garage. But you see here, I have a ton of acoustic paneling. I'll cut to a link of where you can get these guys. But these are like big eight by four foot acoustic blankets that are really nice. I really like these. But you'll see here what I've built. And I got this idea from Caleb from DSLR Shooter. I built it a little bit different than him. But you have this C stand that is on wheels. Over here on the top of this guy, I have a little five in one reflector holder and then I've just gotten some zip ties and I've zip tied the acoustic blanket to the top of that and then raise that puppy up. And that is what is serving as a movable acoustic blanket that I can just position to wherever I'm filming. So that's what I would do for acoustic paneling, even if you're not in your garage anywhere. Plus those are nice. You can like pack those up, take them on the road. If you're doing a corporate interview in someone's office, it's really echoey, really reverby. But here's my first set. And I've positioned this in a way where I can do a few different sets. One is I can film right into the corner and have kind of a split wall on either side. Um, right now it's set up for 
being filmed directly against this back wall. And we'll cut to some options that I've used that for. I have a lot of people, friends, family that want to come in and film. And it's nice having a pretty neutral looking background that isn't branded with full-time filmmaker or something that people can use for their businesses. And then at times, like I said, I'll turn everything this way and film with this back wall, just a nice black wall. You know, a lot of times I'll have this pulled up as a nice little background, computer background. And then you'll see back here, we have what appears to be like a window light coming in. And all that is, is a gobo light on an Aperture 300D that's just splashing some light on there. I am starting to love gobos, highly recommend them. I'll link the ones that I use. I have an Aperture gobo and a cheaper alternative as well. Both have been great. Really cool to be able to have that look. For our key light is a big five foot dome from Aperture and then an Aperture 300X as our key light to light up this space here. Now, as far as this setup goes, um, this couch, I've bought a couple of these couches. They're not the most comfortable couches, but they look nice on camera, and that's what it is, more of a prop couch. Microphones here, we got the Sheps 641, I believe this one is, on a boom arm, and then on a C-stand over here. And then this guy is my top-down setup, also on a C-stand. I think this is a Kupo arm that I can put weights on the end there. And then we have a little setup here with a Westcott joint and a Joby tripod head. And that's where I do a lot of my top downs for unboxings and whatnot. Right here, this is the beloved Shure SM7B. You guys have seen me use this plenty. Really awesome microphone for you know podcast style videos. If I don't want a microphone in frame, I just swing that out and then I hook up this microphone. Desk here, we have a very desk. I think these are six, 700 bucks. Well, these are sit stand and it's not plugged in, but if it was, I could raise it. And then all the audio is running into a Apollo Twin X. And then coming over here to our camera, this is the C70. And I usually have a 35 or a 50 millimeter lens on here with the 0.71 adapter. And this is attached to a Glide Gear teleprompter. I've used a few different teleprompters. For the price, this is probably the one I would recommend using. And then I will have my iPad in here that has a script scrolling so that I can watch it back. And then I will hook up that iPad to my phone, have the app on here as well. And then I can adjust it and control if I need to go back or anything, I can do it from my phone. This is all on a Manfrotto tripod. Again, we'll link to all these, kit.co slash Parker Walbeck. You can see links to everything in my office. You can buy it. As far as the backlighting over here, we have eight foot tube lights from Nanlite have two of them. These are just really nice to be a rim light to light up the back of me as a subject or to light up an entire wall. I have a bunch of the four foot options as well that you'll see in other areas, but I like these eight footers because it can light up an entire wall. It's not just gonna be, you know, the four footers will get you the bottom of a wall, but these are just nice to be able to light up an entire back wall. So this I got off of Amazon. It's a piece of junk, honestly, really terrible quality, but uh, kind of a cool background accent light. And then in here we have a B7C and that just allows me to have exactly the color balance and dimmability that I want within there. And then this wall right here, I can't remember the name of the company, but we'll show it right here. It's kind of nice because it's aesthetic. It's got this nice walnut look, but I have liked it. And when people come wanting to film, they like using this wall. So definitely looks cool. Not ultra expensive and it was really easy to install. We just put in a nail gun into there and put them in in about half hour. We have headphones in each room so that I, I can listen back to the audio after or while I'm testing it out. These are Bayer Dynamic headphones. These are okay. They were cheaper than my other ones that I like better. I think that's it for this room. Let's now move into the next room, this is where the real magic happens. So this is my second film set, if you will. Let's start with this wall right here. Took this full-time filmmaker neon sign, LED sign thing. I think this was like six, 700 bucks, wasn't cheap. I talked about this in my last one. Good, but I don't know if I recommend it. Here we have our most expensive prop in the house, the uh, old Red Dragon camera. When's the last time that was turned on? That I still use that from time to time, but we have a newer RED camera that we'll talk about in a minute. The problem is these appreciate and value so fast that it's like I could probably sell this for five to 10 grand, but I bought it for like 
40 or 50 grand. So it's like, I might as well just keep it at this point. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth selling for a tenth of the price. Oh, right here we got a makeshift barn door. It's just to keep the spill off this back wall as much as possible. So when I'm doing this setup, sometimes I'll put a splash of blue over here or red or something just to kind of liven up the look a little bit. This is the P300C from Aperture. Really cool light, very accurate, um, RGBW, can do all kinds of colors. You can use it as a key light. It ha we have a big five foot soft dome for it as well, but I like using it as a splash light uh, for different color options because I don't have a ton of RGBW lights. And so I kind of just use this mostly for color options. This side of the wall is just from Home Depot. Again, my brother and I built this wall. When I say my brother and I, it was mostly my brother. I just did a nail here and there and watched him. So these are just shiplap boards that we got from Home Depot. I think those are six inches. Luckily, they come in 12 foot pieces. And this was a 12 foot wall that we built 12 by eight feet. And then we just painted it all the paint in here and along this whole wall was Little Black Dress by Landon, by the way. No, it's not by Landon, but he's the one who inspired me to use it. I texted him and said, hey, would you recommend the Little Black Dress that you used? And when I texted him, he said, are you stalking me? Because he was actually painting Little Black Dress in one of his rooms when I texted him that. So he did love it, apparently, because he's always using it. So this wall over here, oh, stepped on a tube light. So these are four foot Nan light tube lights on the bottom here is what's lighting up this back wall. Wood plank, again, I'll put the name below. I can't remember all the brands. Bought a bunch of wood panels from this website and they're pretty thin. And again, just a nail gun and just did this whole wall myself in a couple hours. Another plant, some greenery. Landon recommended this in his office tour as well. Maybe I just bought the wrong ones, but they are way smaller than they seem in the pictures. I wouldn't recommend them. Go to your local home goods or something, see it in real life and pick something you like. And sorry, Landon, but I'm gonna have to give a thumbs sideways on this one. And right here, we have a backup monitor, the $6,000 XDR display from Apple, 32 inch, uh, 6K. I honestly just don't think it's that great. I mean, the design's cool and it's way thicker than it needs to be, but uh, I mean, it's still a great monitor. I just, once you go OLED, you can't go back. Even the MacBook Pro Max that I have over here, I like that display better than the XDR. It's just the blacks aren't as deep and I just don't like it as much. So anyway, that's also thumb sideways. I'm sure some people like it, but for the price, there's a lot better options out there. These chairs, got them off of Amazon. I've enjoyed these. I have two of them now. These are just good for filming. I have my chair back here that I edit in. It has a backrest and whatnot. So let's talk about our film set number two over here with our key light here and me sitting at this desk. By the way, Carter Hogan is filming this on the R5 with this 15 to 35 millimeter RF lens on the Ronin S2. We usually have either an R5 or a C70 right here. I'd be chilling here with my key light. This is a four foot dome. Jinbi, I think is the brand on that one. Really cheap off of Amazon. You can't do an egg crate on this, but for certain areas like this, I don't need an egg crate. And that is going into an Amaron 200X. I recently had a 100X up here as my backlight, but gave that to Stockton for his setup. And I've replaced that with a 300X, which is looking like it's too bright. I haven't filmed yet with that new light, but this desk is Artifox. It is good looking, but it is tiny. It is not that stable and it is very overpriced. This is the most expensive desk I own. It was a recommendation from Jake Weisler. It's kind of average. I mean, it looks cool, but that's about all I can say about it. Here we got another SM7B. This time, instead of on an arm, we just have it on a Samson desk stand. All Mogami XLR cables, very quality. And then again, going into another Apollo Twin X, but, uh, oh, yeah, please. I got it. I got oh, it. he's got it, yeah. Okay. You just look really comfy right there. The screwdriver in there. Mm, delicious. World's best boss. I got that and then I fired everyone that gave them to me. <laughs> so here's one thing to keep in mind. If you build an office in a garage, there's a slope in here. It's not level. That's kind of a problem when you're trying to get a level horizon with your camera. You'll notice here on the bottom, I got all kinds of this going on throughout the office where I have to prop up one side of desks and whatnot to keep it more level because the whole garage is slanting that way. 
That's one con of being in the garage. Otherwise, the garage has been surprisingly really nice. It's gonna be hard to beat. Over here, we have the R7. Like I said, we usually have the R5 or a C70 on here. On that, we have this 24 to 70. The R7 24 to 70 setup I actually used on a wedding of my brother's recently, and it did phenomenally. So the R7 is, I would consider, the best bang for buck camera on the market right now, one of the, uh, at least for Canon. And then right here, you got the Automotive Ninja 5 Plus. This guy I got mostly so that I could record what's on my camera for tutorials and whatnot. And then on here we got the Satchler Flow Tech tripod with the FSB8 head. Super overpriced. It's a good tripod. Is it worth the money? Probably not. I just go Manfrotto. No need to spend that much money, but fluid head wise, it is elite. So if you're needing that extra fluidness, then it is awesome. Plus it has this awesome feature that we got to show every time we do this. Come here, you. <sighs> oh, I guess I'd have to. These are one foot thick acoustic panels that are impossible to hang on walls. I just put these up today because they've fallen off six times and so they will probably fall off at some point during this tour. I'd probably recommend just getting a nice big eight by four foot acoustic blanket. These are gonna be much cheaper, much bigger and very effective. And again, this is on a movable stand, same design as before. And when I'm filming here, I will just put this into place. I usually bring it as close as I can to myself. And then when I film in this spot, I'll just wheel this right over here. So as I'm talking this way, it catches my sound that way. So over here in the backdrop, uh, these are the FTF gear floor lights that I use almost always on all my talking heads. I'll just bring this in nice and tight, just out of frame. Sometimes I'll put it in frame, but this is just gonna be a nice little rim light on the back of my head here, just to help outline me from the back. And they're also really aesthetic looking just in an office space. So um, I have three of these. Let's look at our final setup here. This is uh, where I work. Biggest change this year is the 42 inch LG OLED. I believe this is a C2 series. I've gone through so many monitors. I've done OLED TVs in the past and then gone away from it because it had too much lag. This C2 series, if you select the PC setting, actually does not have a noticeable lag. That problem went away. Is there a reason you chose that size? 42 inch, I think is the smallest size they make. So I could have gotten a 48. I watched some reviews. Some people said 48 is a bit too big for this close of a proximity. And I would agree. I think 42 inches is a good size. And then again, Apollo Twin X, the third one over here, another Podcast Pro arm. And this is a new addition. This is a Newman TLM 103. I've been using the SM7Bs for a long time now, a few years. The Biggest problem with the SM7Bs is they have a high noise floor and they're a little bit flat. Out of the box, it's just gonna require more EQ to get it to sound a little bit poppier, a little bit more lively, which is fine for like long form podcasts where you maybe want a little bit darker audio. But if you want a little bit brighter audio, this out of the box sounds awesome isn't gonna require a lot of EQ. It's gonna be very out of the box. Record, bring it in, export, and it's gonna sound awesome. The noise floor is kind of the biggest thing for me. I just kind of got sick of always having to use some denoise and having to hear that constant fuzz in the background. Aesthetically, I don't think it looks as good as the SM7B. I think it's the biggest reason people buy it for podcasts and stuff is just because it looks good and everyone's used to seeing that microphone in everyone's face. Whereas this one has a Pope hat on to have a nice pop filter, you know, so just not quite as aesthetic. The Barefoots, we've talked about those in the past. These are amazing speakers, very expensive. I believe these are a $6,000 set. Just the stands that are on were 500 bucks a piece. This is a 80 inch long, the biggest one that they make. This is an uplift desk, a bit more expensive than the very options. They're both good companies. I don't know if I'd recommend one or over the other necessarily. The thing I do like about this one is it has a little CPU holder that I actually put my hard drives on. That's the uh, GTEC 144 terabyte drive. We have two of those, another one back there. That's what stores all my footage. My main computer I'm editing on right now is the Mac Studio Ultra. This guy was about five, six grand. 
it's not much different than the MacBook Pro Max. So I did a whole comparison on that. You can go watch that. They're very comparable as far as speed goes. This is going to be faster, but I would still recommend the MacBook Pro Max over the Ultra just for portability reasons. The fact that you can take that with you and this one doesn't have a screen and you can't take it with you. I mean, you could, but you need a screen too. And back here, Every once in a while, I'll put a camera back there and use it as like a computer camera because this obviously doesn't have a camera on it. This is a Manfrotto tripod. It's pretty nice. It's kind of a travel tripod, lighter one, you know, for situations like that where I can just stick it back in areas. This was like 250 bucks though. And I don't know if I'd recommend something like this for the price. There's a few things that are gonna make it a little bit nicer than our FTF gear tripod. This is gonna be basically the same thing as this guy. This is gonna cost you like 70 bucks, so it's gonna be four times cheaper, get the same job done. So that's kind of why we've been building these FTF gear tripods is this is gonna hold up any camera just fine for 70 bucks. We got another FTF gear lamp here. As I'm sitting here at this desk doing editing tutorials, this is gonna be my rim light. This is my key light here. This is a 40 inch soft dome from Aperture with another 300X. Love me some aperture lights. And the camera setup that is filming us is another C70. On this one, we have a 35 millimeter Sigma lens with the 0.71 adapter. Most of my talking heads are gonna be between 24 and 50 millimeter. Uh, this talking head specifically is 35 millimeter. And we have a nice small HD seven inch on top here so that I can see myself. And this is all sitting on another Manfrotto tripod. As far as the lights back here, another Nanlite tube light, which is basically just lighting up this plant. You'll notice that this is sitting on a apple box. This is actually the first apple box I've bought and I don't know why I haven't bought them earlier because I'm always propping stuff on top. So here's two different options of apple boxes. So this is a traditional apple box. This one's made by Kupo and the idea is that if you need to raise something up higher, you have this option. You can have this second option. So depending on what height you need, you have different options to prop stuff up on it. These are made out of wood, they're really sturdy. You can also just use it as something to sit on. Now this guy is quite a bit cheaper and it's made out of foam and it's called the foam box. It's got a little handle here, but it's the same idea, just a box. The th complaint I saw about this online is that it's not the same size as a traditional Apple box. They were wondering, why wouldn't you guys just make it the same size as an Apple box? Because then if you needed to use an Apple box with one of these, you could use them together and have it even, but they didn't make it the same size. So that's the only complaint I've seen about that. Otherwise, really good cheap option for an Apple box to use to prop up stuff. The backlight here is a Forza 60C from Nanlite, which is kind of a strange little light. It's not a Bowens mount. It's got a smaller mount on there, but it's a great backlight and it is RGBW, so it can do any colors I want. But I've been using that as my hair light. This thing is massive, it is powerful. I mean, just this box alone is humongous. The reason I have this set up on these spotlights is because when you go through a gobo, you see that back wall there, Sometimes I'll put some designs on the back wall. I'll cut to a few different options I've used to kind of light up the back wall and give you some different looks and options there. But when you go through a gobo, it really takes a lot of output for it to show up well, especially on like a black background like that. And so this is cranked up to like 80%. I actually need most of the output, the 600X, to be able to get enough light through this gobo. All right, moving on to the final part of the office setup is my newest addition, which is basically a gear storage charging area. I actually got this design idea from Jason Morris. He has a similar setup. And so I went and found these at Home Depot and they come with this stuff that's kind of cheap and we kept that on some of them but at Home Depot we had to actually get them online we got these nice walnut pieces of wood that we had to cut a little bit to fit in nicely for these two shelves so the two shelves that you see the most we made them a little more aesthetic and also more practical because you can't really put stuff on these like you would here with lenses and whatnot you don't want that getting all scratched up and then on the back here I put some two by fours 
on the back. And then we just got a nice four by eight foot piece of pegboard, again at Home Depot. They were white though, so we got some black spray paint and just spray painted it black. You see right here, screwed them in. What you have is a pegboard that you can actually put little hangers on here, little hooks. And then you'll see over here, we got a Ronin gimbal section. Got an RS2, an RS3, and an RS3 Pro chilling over here. And then we got Carter on another RS2 there. And then I put some zip ties up here to put some tube lights so that I can not only see everything on the desk, but also aesthetically looks cool as a backdrop for when I'm filming against it. And then over here, I just screwed in one of these big long outlet strips and that pretty much allows me to charge all of my stuff. This has been an awesome charging station, by far the best charging station that I've had to date. Down here, I just have taped Philips Hue strip lights to the bottom here so that it can light up these bottom shelving so I can see what's going on down here. We got the Sennheiser lav mic over here. I honestly don't use it a ton anymore because what I'm using right now is a Zoom F2 with, and I've already forgotten this mic. <laughs> we'll put it on the screen. It's my favorite mic setup, highly recommend it. This thing's really slick though. It is slick. It just comes, comes right off. That is the bubble B mount, I believe is what you call that. Couple of Zoom F3s. I'm really into Zoom lately. I think they're making some great products. The F3s can record 32-bit float, which is really nice for running gunners who just don't have the ability to be checking audio all the time and just need to set it and forget it. And here's a new product I recently bought. It comes with two mics. This is from Ceramonic. This plugs into your iPhone and then you just turn these on and automatically syncs up to them so you can have audio going directly into your iPhone. But if you do a lot of content creation on your phone and you want better, higher quality audio, but don't want to have to be tethered to your phone with the cable, these are really awesome. Highly recommend those. We also have the FTF Gear Lav Mic. It's gonna be a lot less expensive, 30 bucks. This will be tethered to your phone. So if you're okay being tethered to it, that's a great option. And then here you got the FTF Gear Mic. I've done a comparison between that and the SM7B. This is going to be much cheaper, plugged directly into your computer via USB versus having to buy an audio interface. And honestly, the audio quality to most people is going to be negligible if you know how to connect it and use it properly. So so moving on over to here, this is our last station of the day. We got a DJI Mini 2, a DJI Mini 3 Pro as our two drones on display there. Lenses wise, we've got quite an array. Uh, we've showed you some of the lenses that we've been using in the, the other setups, but here we got a 24 millimeter EF, we have a 50 millimeter RF, 24 to 70 EF, a 35, a 18 to 35 Sigma, a 20 Sigma, a 28 to 70 2.0 Canon, an 85 Sigma, and a 70 to 200 RF. My favorite lenses to use are typically in that 24 to 50 millimeter range. But then in the back here, you have a new lens lineup. These are called Mikey lenses. These are cinema lenses meant for video only, not really for photography. These are manual lenses. And I just wanted a cheap set of cinema lenses that I could do tests with. And they're not the nicest cinema lenses in the world, but bang for buck, they're pretty dang awesome. They are all the same height. They all have the same millimeter thread. So those are just some of the pros of having uh, cinema lenses. And then you see over here on our red Raptor 8K, we have the 50 millimeter Mikey lens, which is what I shot a recent music video on for foreign figures with this setup here. That was the first time using the Mikeys and first impression, I liked them. They're really solid. They're the first cinema lenses I've used, so I don't anything to compare them to. Also, the focus ring is going to be much longer, which means you're gonna have much more precision in your focal points, and you're also going to have the ability to adjust your aperture on your lens, and it's not gonna be by steps, but it's going to be smooth. But as far as the RED cameras, we talked about a little bit already. Love these cameras. The Image quality is just next to none. Even my Canon cameras, which I love. The problem with the RED is they are huge. They are clunky. The battery life is terrible. The autofocus isn't good if you want to use that. So there's just not a lot of times where I'm like, oh, I want to pick up the RED and use that because they're just kind of a pain in the butt to use. Then over here, we got the glide cams. We got the old 4000. The main one I use now is the Glidecam HD Pro. 
do still use it. It's just gonna be heavier, gonna be harder, but I like the look better. And so again, just trade-offs. I do like both. I think it's worth learning and owning both. Over here, we got the uh, Polar Pro matte box. And on it right now, I have the Blue Morphic filter, which I did use for the first time on that music video. We'll cut to some clips. You can tell me what you think. I was torn on it. I think it's a cool look. I just don't in general like using filters. Anytime I put more glass in front of my lens, it just feels lower quality to me. I like the look of just clean glass with no filters where possible. Real quick down here, camera bags. Talked about these in the past. I got the Ape case I've liked for years. We now make our own. The um, the FTF gear bag just holds a ton of cargo. They're currently sold out, shipping woes, but we should be getting some new ones in 2023. And uh, favorite feature is that they will. So if you're gonna travel, go to airports, save your bag, get a bag that wills. I will not use a camera bag that doesn't will because I think it's just much better on the back. So that's pretty much it, folks. The rest of this is just kind of storage shelving, but uh, that in a nutshell is my new storage slash battery corner. Really excited about this new setup in the garage. I didn't even mention this, but I think it's like 300 bucks. I'll put the name brand below. Highly recommend, this one's really good. This one actually has a footrest here that I thought I would use more, but it's kind of an awkward, I don't know. It, 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 it didn't work quite the way I thought it would, so I don't know if I'd recommend getting the, the foot rest, but the chairs themselves, this is really good. That's pretty much it, guys, for my office tour in 2023. I uh, just wanna reiterate that this has taken seven years to accumulate. I know it seems like I have a ton of stuff, but I started with just a used camera and a cheap computer and just kind of went step by step until I accumulated what I have now. So just wanna let you guys know that if you work hard enough and you put your mind to it and you can have the office of your dreams. I've always dreamed of this since I started 10 years ago. It's definitely possible, but that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. Uh, make sure to check out the full version of this, again, extended at fulltimefilmmaker.com where we teach you how to use all this gear, not just what to buy, but how to use it. But that's all I got. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any further questions, please let me know. <gasps> Lila wants to oh, make a, and an this, appearance in the office. Too. This is the nicest part. This is the 530 hour version. This office. is the nicest part about working from home is you get visitors. Dave's likes it in here, huh? There's so many lights and cool things. Yeah, working from home has its challenges, but it also has its perks. Huh, that's right. Well, that's it for the garage office. I do recommend if you were looking to build in a garage, pros and cons, but overall, I mean, as long as you have the space for it, I obviously have a very Mongo garage. Can you say, see you later? All right, peace.